Today I'll be showing you how to refresh your Ubuntu installation. Now, I touched on this in part two of my is it possible to upgrade Ubuntu 6.06 LTS to 20.04 LTS video, but I thought that this deserved its own separate video. So in case you're unfamiliar, refreshing your Ubuntu installation basically means reinstalling Ubuntu without erasing any of your data. Like basically doing a reinstallation while keeping your data intact. Now you're gonna need one prerequisite before you can begin, and that is your Ubuntu installation media. So now a couple disclaimers before we start. First of all, this won't work if you have an encrypted home folder. So if you're one of those people like me, you're stuck with just the full wipe and reinstall. And second of all, it'll try to reinstall your applications, but sometimes this doesn't work and you may need to reinstall your applications. And also this won't preserve your settings. So you will need to set those again. But still it is nice that Ubuntu even has this option at all, even if it is hidden. But Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so now you're gonna need to get into your boot menu, which you can do by pressing your boot menu key. It'll usually be escape, F2, or F12, or delete, or something like that, depending on what computer you have. If you don't know the boot menu key, you can just look up your computer's model and then boot menu key. Or in the case of a custom build, your motherboard's model and then boot menu key. But anyway, once you're there, you're gonna wanna make sure that your Ubuntu installation media is plugged in, which as you can see here, it's not. I'm using a virtual machine, but this would be the equivalent of plugging in your Ubuntu installation media. It's in my VMware folder and there's the Ubuntu installation ISO. And then once you've got that plugged in, you're going to boot from it. So now what you're going to want to do is go through the Ubuntu installer as if you were doing a full wipe and reinstall. Select your language, keyboard layout, check both of these other options, and do a normal installation. Unless you're one of those people that does a minimal installation, of course. The only difference is when you get to installation type, don't click any of these options. Click something else and then click continue. And then it'll bring up a partitioner to manage your partitions. The only thing you need to worry about is the partition with your Ubuntu installation on it. So what you're gonna do is click on that. Now, first take note of the label under type. This tells you what file system it's using. For the vast majority of you, it'll be ext4, which is what I have here. So now once you've taken note of that, you're gonna click change and then keep size the same. And then under use as, you're gonna click the file system that your Ubuntu partition is already formatted with, in this case, ext4. And then under mount point, you're gonna type slash. Now make absolutely sure that you do not check off format the partition. If under use as, you selected a file system other than what your Ubuntu partition is using, it'll force you to format the partition. So make sure that the file system that you selected under use as is the file system that your Ubuntu partition is already using. But anyway, once you're done here, you're gonna click okay. And now again, no partition, should have its format box checked off and make sure the mount point for your Ubuntu partition is slash again without its format box checked off. And then you're gonna go here and click install now. And then it's gonna complain that your Ubuntu partition has not been marked for formatting. You're gonna click continue. And then again, it's gonna complain that no partition table changes and no creation of file systems have been planned. You're gonna click continue. And then you're gonna select your time zone. We are in the Toronto time zone. And then you're gonna have to set up your account again, put in whatever name you want. And then here's your chance to rename your computer. I'll call it YouTube VM. Now just make sure that the username under pick a username is the exact same username that you used on your Ubuntu installation. And then you're gonna choose a password. I don't think it really matters if you put a different password here, but I'd say in this case, it's better to be safe than sorry. But anyway, once you're done that, you're gonna click continue and then it'll go ahead and refresh your Ubuntu installation. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. So now it may give you this error. This just means that you may have to reinstall some applications, but your data will still be intact. Don't worry. And then once it says installation complete, you're going to click restart now. Then after the reboot, just log in. And as you can see by my file right here, you won't have lost any data. I can show you that by opening this file. And there you go. So now, don't quote me on this, but I think you'll have to set up your user accounts again with the exact same usernames that they had. Now, I've never tried this on a system with multiple users, so don't take my word for it. And you may have to reinstall your applications and you will have to set up your settings again. But hey, at least you get to keep your data intact. And that is how you refresh your Ubuntu installation. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.